Hello, welcome to my workshop. I'm Chris Pine. One of my favorite projects on the lathe is to make a rolling pin. You are free to design it however you want. I've seen many different designs on the internet and from other people I know that have made them and one of those is a French type that's nothing more than a dowel or a piece of wood that's round that's tapered on the ends. There are some that are made out of one piece of wood with the handles turned down uh, as part of that one solid piece and there are the, then there's the kind that I like to make and that is the kind where the handles actually rotate freely um, as you roll out use the rolling pin the handles stay stationary in your hands I'd like to make one of those today come with me let's see if we can get okay, this okay what I have here is just an example this is a rolling pin I think honestly we've had it for years it's a store-bought one and it was given to us, I believe, uh, as a wedding gift. As you can see, it's pretty small. This diameter of the main cylinder is probably less than two inches big. And if you will notice, the rod goes all the way through this main piece and is connected to the handles. Just an example of one we still have that was store-bought. I don't know, this is not maple. Uh, it might be maple, I'm not sure. It looks kind of characteristic of a maple grain there. But it's a small, inexpensive, store-bought rolling pin. This is one that I made years ago. This is probably my first attempt at making a rolling pin. And I really undersized the handles. And I glued up the, the main blank here, if you can see, from several three-quarter inch pieces of wood. I don't know if you can see the lines there of each piece that's glued together. I glued that together to make the blank. My wife has used this for a very long time, and as you can see, it's much more larger around. I, I kind of modeled this pin after this one in the, in the length, at least, and turned it out of a glued-up blank. Now, this is one that I still have around. I have actually have this one for sale on Etsy. And what I started doing, I've made, my goodness, I don't know, I bet I've made over 30 of these different rolling pins. I had a deal with a guy who was my wood supplier. If, if I would turn him 10 pins, he would provide me in payment with wood blanks um, to make all the pins I wanted to make. So I think I did that three different times for him, if I recall correctly. It's been years ago now. And I've been outfitted with wood turning blanks ever since. Um, this one is almost 13 and a half inches long. And the diameter is similar to the other one, probably two and a half, two and three quarters inches uh, in diameter on the main blank. The handles are turned out of some figured maple. And the gifts that I've given of these, the people just love them because it's not your ordinary rolling pin, as you can see. So let's get started. I got some blanks and I got some wood for the handles. Let's get started. What I think I'm going to do today is do a little contrasting wood. These are, I had these blanks left over from past projects. These are ready to roll as far as handles and it's some nice cherry. So I think this wood here with the cherry handles is gonna really look sharp. have the blank corners cut off and I've slowed the RPMs down by moving my belt uh, to around 1250 RPM. I just usually play with that until it feels comfortable. This is still a little wobbly because this is not round of course, but it's much better at this speed than it was at the higher speed. So now we just need to make this a round cylinder and we'll go from there. Roughing. Roughing gouge to start. Okay, we're 
we're making progress. I'm going to move on down the blank so that I get it um, sized gradually throughout the whole blank. Okay, we got it round, and this is some beautiful wood. I don't know if you can see that in the video. There's some really nice figure in it. Uh, it's very roughly turned right now. So I need to do a little bit of work and then do some sanding. Okay, here's what we've got. We got the cylinder turned and we've got it sanded up to 320, which is where I'm going to stop. And you can see a little bit of that figure in that wood. It's just really pretty. So basically, the main portion of the rolling pin, the center cylinder, is done. I'm going to remove it and we're going to get started on the handles. As you recall, I previously said that I had already drilled these out, so the hole goes all the way through the handle blank, and it is cherry. I have that mounted on the drill press between centers, and I'm going to turn down the handle. I'm probably going to go with a fairly generic shape, just a little taper on each end, comfortable handle for the rolling pin. After turning the second handle, the wood revealed a defect inside. And this is just a, uh, I don't know, it's got a gap in here. It might be part of the bark uh, that has grown, the tree has grown around it. Um, but there is some holes here, and it's a little weakened, weakened by that. So, that's why they make CY glue, super glue or cyanacrylate. I don't know if I said that right, but we'll fill that in and uh, let it harden and we'll clean it up and it should be fine. Okay, we've got it uh, filled with super glue and sanded and that is all smooth and no voids. So that's going to work well. It actually adds character to the piece, so no worries. Handle number two, done. So we have the handles made and they'll go on this approximately right like that. The way that we put the handles on is we have to make pins that look something like this. And you could turn them the way I did on this one, that I still have one left over from some time ago, out of one piece of wood. And that's a lot more work if you just do the way I've done on many of these, is you buy a dowel, the size half inch dowel, and you glue a block of wood on the end. Then you turn the end piece on the dowel and of course it goes through this piece. Of course it doesn't look like this when it's done. And then you glue that into the main cylinder and that allows it to rotate in your hands. So I need to turn these so that we can use those for the handles. We have the handle or pin, the pin for the handle mounted up in my chuck on the lathe and I'm going to turn this section down to the knob on the end that we want to hold the handle. Okay here's what it's going to look like. Of course these are not glued in yet but the basic gist is that this this will spin, of course. You glue this in. Be careful not to get glue in this area. So you apply glue towards the end, slide it into the cylinder, and then let it dry. Leave a little gap here and here so that there's a little bit of play there. I also like to, before I glue it, is to put some wax on here so that it has some lubrication for the roller. And that's about the size of it. I'll get this glued up. And I finish my rolling pins with very simple mineral oil, just like you would a cutting board. And that is it. I will get back to you when I get this all glued up and maybe put some finish on.
Let's put some uh, mineral oil on this. Just like with a cutting board, this is a lot of fun to see the wood just come to life. So here we go. So we finished the rolling pin today. What a beautiful piece of wood. Just the, the figured maple here, the cherry handles, some with character of their own. I love making these and they're such a well-received gift and it's really a pretty simple project when you get right down to it. It's just making a bunch of cylinders. Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. This is Chris Pine. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.